Hello everyone! This is the second Cinderella Life build I'm showing. It complements the first one where I showed you the geometry tools of the program. Today we want to do more of the more about today we want to today we want to do more with the coding of Cinderella. You can watch both of them independently, but I encourage you to watch both of them. And if you like these kind of videos, please let me know and I will do more of these Cinderella Life builds in the future. And yeah, well, what I want to do today is something I have never done in Cinderella and it's a shame because it somehow feels like mandatory for someone who does mass visualizations, namely a visualization for integrals, how they work. And yeah, let's, let's see how that goes. First of all, let's add some axes because we want to plot something and then we can get right into the scripting. So we can open the script editor here with control 9 or this menu option and then you will see this window here and let's put them side by side. Then I think that's that's good enough to see everything. And first of all I want to explain to you what you can see here in this left column. Cinderella uses a uh, an event system. That means if anything happens in the program an appropriate event will be triggered and then the code attached to this event will be executed. And most of them are hopefully somewhat obvious. So mouse down, for example, happens if you click a mouse button down, mouse, where is it, mouse up directly beneath it, when the mouse button is released and mouse drag if you drag the mouse. So if you click it and drag around, that happens, especially if you have a point or any other object and you move it around, then this drag script is executed. Uh, let's delete that. And for us, uh, yeah, and for us, the important ones for today are mostly initialization and draw. Draw always happens when something is drawn, which is not as often as you might expect if you have experience with other programs. This is only triggered if something has to be redrawn, so if something in the geometric configuration changes. Uh, the init script here gets triggered once at the very start when the program starts or in Cinderella if you hit this gear icon then the code is reloaded and re-executed from the beginning. And yeah, we will mostly do things here and set up things here and then we draw them here. And let's, let's get started because we want to do integration. Let's start with a function. Let's define a function f of x and let it be, I don't know, just for, for first purposes, let it be x squared. And you see here you define functions in Cinderella by using this colon and then an equal sign as you would do in mass notation or at least as some people would do in mass notation when they define something. So this is now a function f of x which spits out x squared. And let's, let's plot it. So plot is just plot and then we have f of x and if we hit the gear icon we should see it here in the editor and let's let's zoom in a little bit maybe maybe like this and yeah now we can look for a better function because I don't want to do a, a well integration here under this that's is too steep so maybe make it something like this then it is flatter, flatter, maybe something like this. And let's make it a little bit squiggly. So let's add a little bit of a sine wave. Maybe this and maybe this. I don't know. Oh, that's, that's way too. That's way too. Well, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now it's now it's somewhat interesting looking and now we can start with our integral. Uh, yeah, integrals. We want to find the area under the curve between two endpoints. So let's place some endpoints, A and B. Let's make their labels bigger. So the inspector with control I and they are selected. But let's do the default, the default size. Let's make everything 30 points. And because in mass the 
the endpoints of integration are usually Oops, by yeah. default, I would say. They are labeled with small a and small b. Let's label them small a and small b. Just remember, they are still the points themselves are still called capital A, capital B, but they are just labeled. All right, now we want to find the integration, the, the integral from A to B. So let's draw lines upward here to indicate where we are. So we go to the draw script and I think we do this. Before we plot the function, we want to draw a line upwards from A to the graph. So we want to draw and then a line. A line has two endpoints. And uh, yeah, the first endpoint is A itself. And the next endpoint is, well, it has the x coordinate of A, but it has well, our function value as the y coordinate. So this is f of ax. So and before we add, add anything, let's see if it works. It works. And now let's make it, uh, I don't know, white, which looks like this. So there are, yeah, it works. So there are two things to mention here in Cinderella. Colors are written as three-dimensional vectors, which is very common, but Cinderella uses values from zero to one for every red, green, and blue channel, which is, I don't know, maybe that's a 50-50 split across programming languages, whether they use zero to one or zero to 255. Here you have zero to one. And for example, as I said, this is red, green, blue. So if we crank up the first one, it's red, but let's make it white. And yeah, the, the other thing is what I did here. So I wrote a list of elements and I used square brackets for that. And then I used a, another list of coordinates where I used round brackets. And in Cinderella, you have lists of elements, which is usually called an array in programming. And you also have vectors as you would do in math. And both of them are treated basically the same, if not really the same in Cinderella. And you can use square brackets around parentheses for both. So I'm often mix and match depending on what it means or what's easier to read. So in, in this case, I prefer to have the square brackets for these line segments that you're drawing because it's like a list, but I'm often using round parentheses for points because it's points and I'm used that from school. But as I said, you can, you can, you could use square brackets here too. But if you nest a lot of square brackets, it somehow gets harder to read. In any way, let's do the same for the point B. And then we should have our integration endpoints. So, oh yeah, what, I, what I'm seeing here right now is uh, I want to fix the height of our points. So let's do that also in the draw script. Why not? So let's fix the height to, what is it, minus one maybe? And by to minus one. And now the height of these points stays fixed. You could do that in the editor, right? You could do, let's say, activate the grid and activate the snap to the grid. And then we could have a line here. And then you could snap the points to the line directly. But maybe we want to do something completely else with the, with the points. So I'm doing it in code. All right, and now, well, movement, we want to have movement. All right, now we want to have rectangles here in between, which approximate our, our integral. And let's start with some number. So let's go back to the initialization where we set everything up. So let's start with n equal, I don't know, eight rectangles maybe. That should be a nice first test run. And then we want to draw rectangles. So we want to get, we want to get the rectangles, I guess. So we write a function, let's call it calculate, calculate rect. And then we do a little bit more. 
Now we have a more complicated function and in Cinderella it's a functional programming language and in particular everything is a function, more or less. And the return value of a function is always the last thing you compute. So if you say, if you make this one and let's make two calculations, something like this, and then we can give the result back to the to the console here at the very bottom. What did we call it? Calculate rect. And now you see we get the result of the last calculation we did inside of the function definition as the actual result of the function. So what we want to do is to get those rectangles, we want to have a list, or I want to have a list, a list of list of points. So every rectangle is a list of its four corners and of those lists of four corners I want to have, well all of them in this case, eight at the beginning. So let's start by calculating the, I don't know, bottom left corners first. Uh, yeah, so, so let's calculate the bottom left corner. So we want to subdivide this bit here between the x coordinate of A and the x coordinate of B into eight segments. And at the end we want to have nine points here, right, because the, we start with the bottom left corner of the first rectangle and then somewhere here will be the bottom left corner of the last rectangle and then we have the bottom right corner of the last rectangle. So we will, in total we will see nine points or n plus one points in total and we have to we have to remember that. So what we want to do is um, we want to interpolate. Yeah okay so so let's do that. Let's do that beforehand. I should have done it beforehand. It's always good to define lerp. Lerp is the most important function in all of graphics programming. Let me do it correctly for a moment. This function will interpolate from x to y as the value t runs from 0 to 1. So if t is 0, let's check, it returns x. And if it is 1, it returns y, so that checks out. And yeah, in between it's just a linear interpolation and it's probably the most used function in all of graphics programming. And I'm usually defining it right at the start whenever I do some sort of coding, even if I'm not sure whether I will need it, because I will need it. And we, will, we want to do exactly that, right? We want to interpolate from here to here in somewhat regular intervals. Right, so let's define the bottom left corner of our rectangles. We want to interpolate, as I just said, from... Uh, we want to interpolate mostly the, the uh, x-coordinate. So let's plug that into a, into a vector, into a list, and it sits at height 0. And we want to go from the x-coordinate of A to the x-coordinate of B. And we want to do that a couple of times, right? So we want to do this for every rectangle, so for all n elements. And we want to get a list back. So we use the apply function. The apply function takes a list and transforms it. So in this case, we want to go from, uh, let me think correctly, we want to have n, we want to have eight rectangles, so we want to start from 0 and we want to go to n minus 1. Sounds about right. So this will create a list of the numbers from 0 to n minus 1 and we want to somehow manipulate them and at the very beginning we just want to have the bottom left corner. So let's see how we can get there. In Cinderella if you have such a list function, or a function that operates on lists, it has this generic running index or running variable uh, hashtag, or the hash or, or cross mark or whatever you want to call it. This will now represent the element we're in. So if we are cycling through this array, in the first iteration this will be zero, in the next one it will be one, then it will be two, and so on. And at the end it will be n minus one, which in our case is seven. And we want to interpolate from a to b and I think we can just divide by n. Is that correct? So if we 
start with zero. This value is zero and we end up at the x coordinate of a. And if we are at n minus one, we're just shy of the x coordinate of b. That sounds believable. So let's let's so let's see whether that works. So at the moment we just computed the bottom left corners. So let's see how that looks. We can use the command draw all to draw all elements in a list. And calculate rect. Did I call it calculate rect rects? Rects plural is probably better. Calculate rects. And if we now click on the gear, we should see that it works out, right? And that looks good, right? So here we have we have our eight segments for the eight rectangles, and we have the bottom left corner. So this is the bottom left of the first one, of the second one, and then here, as I said earlier, we have the bottom right corner of the last rectangle, which we just didn't calculate. And if we change this to, I don't know, three, it gives you three bottom left corners. That's very nice. All right, so let's stay with eight for a moment. And yeah, the, the draw all command is very nice. It draws whatever it recognizes as the element of the list. So if the elements of the list would be line segments, it would autom automatically draw line segments. If it would be circles, it would draw circles and so on. So it just detects what it is. And if it's just simple coordinates, it will interpret it as points. All right, now these are the bottom left corners. So the bottom right corners, the bottom right corner is just a little bit farther to the right. So this is just bottom left corner plus a little bit. And this little bit is because we subdivide it into n bits, one over n should be right. And now we have to determine the height of our of our rectangle. The height should be, now we have to decide what kind of integral we're doing. You can approximate this shape under the curve by rectangles in multiple ways. Let's do, let's do just the smaller one, such that the rectangles sit under the graph. Um, I think you could, might be a good idea at the end to have some buttons to change the exact model, but, but maybe I won't do that today. Let's just keep it simple and just do one. So we want to define f of blx and f of brx. So this takes the x-coordinate of the left and the right corners, takes the function values, and then the smaller one, the minimum. And now this should be should be the height of our rectangle, the correct height of the rectangle. And now the bottom, how do I want to order it? Let's start, let's make it anti-clockwise. So we have bottom left, bottom right, uh, top right, which I don't have to decide at the moment, but that's okay. So the top right is the bottom right, and then it goes upwards slightly. So zero height, height, and then the top left is the bottom left plus this upwards vector. And now we have to decide. As I said earlier, we get the result of our, of our calculations as the final thing we put in. So let's say bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left. And now this is the final result. This is the result that gets sent to the apply function. So we start with these indices, with these numbers, and we get back this list of corners of our rectangles. And let's draw them. Let's draw them behind those selector lines, I guess. So we first calculate them. So rects is calculate rects and then let's I don't know fill them in so all of them are polygons so we use fill poly there is a typo that looks right 
So we fill poly, so we want to do that for all rects, we want to do something. So this is basically the Cinderella version of a for loop. For all rects, we want to fill them. And if I just write this, so again, this for all function is a array function, an array function, and it takes this hash as the standard element, the standard iterator element. And now it amazingly doesn't work. I mean, the draw function does work. I just made a mistake in the width. So, oh yeah, we, we, we of course, uh, one over n is of course right, but we have to scale it up by the distance between a and b. Or oh, let's, let's make it a little bit better. The distance in the, in the x coordinates divided by n. That looks now much, much more correct. And yeah, now we can just as we did, where did we do it? Uh, here we added this modifier with this, with this error symbol. We can do that here too. So first of all, let's define a rect color. I think we will need that more often. Uh, let's define it somewhere here at the very start. Because in general, I like this blue for lines, but the standard blue to fill elements is not so nice, I think. So let's make them, I don't know, orange. How does orange look like? Maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.3, 0 0.1. Is that a nice orange? That is a very, let's make it a little bit, a little bit, is that a nice orange? Let's say it's a nice orange for now and we make it slightly see-through, maybe. So you can change the opacity with this alpha value. Let's make it. Now this looks this, this looks somewhat nice. And the only problem is we can now not really distinguish them, the, the, the borders. Maybe if you, if you can see it on the recording, there are very, very small gaps between them, but they are mostly rendering errors because they, the edges of them sit right next to each other which makes it look very weird. So instead, to make this better, we just don't fill it, we also draw it. So if you type draw poly, it will draw the outline. And now it's the same color, let's make the, make, let's make the outline also white, then it matches our selectors. And now that, that, no, that looks nice. Let's make them more translucent, more even. And yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe this looks nice now. Now we can see the rectangles quite well. And let's, let's see what happens in the negative part. Uh, so let's make this cube, then we can get, then we can get negative and make it flatter again, flatter. Yeah, and now let's see what, what happens over here in the negative. Yeah, all right, okay, because we used the we used the minimum of the actual values and not of the absolute values, it will now calculate the rectangles which go beyond the graph. So let's take the absolute values of these function values and of course, we now need the sign of them. Oh, okay, this. Do I want to? Do I want to add a sign now? Yeah, I think I'll just just ignore this negative part for now. Don't want to implement the sign function. Don't want to think about this at the moment. So, because at the end, if we are if we're doing this approximation, we will well, approximate the integral in any way. So let's let's move it up here. What happens if we, let me quickly go back to the previous version of our function. What happens if we flip a and b? This is also something we should take care about. But then, yeah, so now the rectangles are on the wrong side. Let, let me fix that at least. That should be, that should be easier. So we define 
probably probably here somewhere we want to find the direction we are walking in so the direction is either one or minus one depending on whether a or b is larger so we make an if statement in cinderella if statements are also functions everything is a function so we start with a condition so if the x coordinate of a is at most the x coordinate of b then a is smaller than b so we're in the case on screen and we want to have the direction to be forward so comma one and in the other case this is the else case you would call in many programming languages it's minus one and this is a very compact way to write if statements in cinderella if I do more complicated stuff inside of if statements. I often spread it over several lines and I often even I often even add here a little comment to make it clear that now the else case is starting because if the if the code gets very long it's hard to see so for long calculations inside of if statements it will look something like this for me usually but it's very, very, very compact. And if you're used to it, it's, it's very nice to do something like this. All right. And well, as I said, the if statement is a function. So the return value is either this or this, depending on, on well, the true statement of our statement here, the true value of our statement. And this gets assigned to the direction. And then, well, this is exactly what we need here, right? So depending on what we're doing, we move in a different direction when defining the bottom right. So and now it now it looks right. All right, now we have our, our rectangles and now we can do two things. So we need to calculate the area and we also need to like here, in a, we don't need to do that, but at the moment we only can change the number of rectangles here in code, and it would be nice to have a slider. And I think I'll do the slider first. So we can we can code a slider completely from scratch. I've done that a couple of times, but the easiest way to get a slider in Cinderella is to have a line segment and place a point on the line segment, and then we can just take this value or calculate the value. So we won't have this value, we want to read this from here. So let's say the minimum min min rect min rect is that a is that a good name? The minimum amount of rects let's say is do we want to start with one? Yes, we want to start with one. And the maximum number of rects is, I don't know, 100. It's probably not a good approximation for the integral necessarily, but it's maybe still visible what happens. If you go to up to 1000, it's probably just smush. So let's let's start. That. Oh yeah, now we, we, we deleted our n, so let's, let's keep that for now, such that our rectangles are still visible. And now we want to have the number of rectangles. Again, another number of rectangles another function and now we want to get this from our our slider we have and to do that we want to find out how far along the line segment we are with our point e and to do that we basically want to do the opposite of lerp or we call it inverse lerp inverse lerp so we have two points let's call them x and y again two objects and we have a point we sample from in between x and y and we want to have the distance from x to p so this is whatever we start with to wherever we are in relation to the whole distance from start to finish and the nice thing about Cinderella is that it doesn't really matter which objects you use here. So lerp, the way I wrote it, works for everything which is vaguely a vector, so for which this can be calculated, i.e. single numbers or vectors or matrices, it doesn't matter. And this inverse lerp, as long as the distance function is defined for these kind of things, this will be 
uh, this will be executed and calculated. So let's see that the inverse lerp works. So let's go to the draw function and use print line to get something to the console. So inverse lerp and we want to have CD and we want to measure E. And now if we move E around, we see here in the console, we see how far we progressed from zero to one along our segment by moving E around. So this gets now this relative position of E. And what we actually want to have is, of course, we want to have the number of rectangles. I don't need so much space. So we want to go from the minimum number to the maximum number. So min rects max rects. And now we want to do exactly what we did just now. And go back to our draw script. And what did I call it? Number of rectangles, probably. Right. Looks right. And now we see that we start with one rectangle and we go up to 100 rectangles. And of course, we have fractional parts, which doesn't make too much sense for number of rectangles. So we just chuck in a round. And now we should have a nice clean integer value. And now if we, oh no. And now if we use that value instead of this n, where did we define it? So let's define n locally as number of rectangles and we don't have to change the rest here. And now, oh, it already looks like a nice little integral visualization. Perfect. So let's get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. And yeah, well, I guess we are almost finished. We just now have to calculate the integral and then we, or the, the, the area of the rectangles, and then we can make everything a little bit prettier and then we're done. Well, before we start, I think it would be nice to have the number of rectangles like visible in, in the actual application, not just in code or not just hidden in code. So let's add a function label. So th with this tool here, you can define functions inside of the editor and you can get their, their result back. So what we want to have is a string which tells us how many rectangles we have. So rectangles and the number of rectangles is the number of rectangles, rectangles. These function labels, they can reference things we defined in code. And if I write that, it, it looks almost right. We want to have a space here, of course. And now we have the number of rectangles actually in our application. I think that makes sense. Uh, a small a small problem, of course, is that at the at the very beginning it says one rectangles, so we could we could change that with an if statement, but I, I'll just ignore that uh, for now. And well, now we can we can talk about the actual area of our rectangles. Okay, now we have to think about, I have to think about what's the easiest way to calculate it. We already have the rectangles. So do I want to get the, the information? Because the rectangles, of course, the, the area of the rectangle is just the width times the height. So what we can do is just take this, just take the result here and recalculate the width and the height from those values, or do we just want to do these two these two lines? I think that's that's nicer. I, I, I don't know. Is that nicer? Let's 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 do that. So what do we want to do? Um, area of do we want to have one rectangle first or do we want to have all rectangles? Area of all rectangles. I guess is you can do that directly. So I'm not too happy with that. Do I want to 
do the same calculation or do I want to take the, I think I want to take the, the, the result. I think that's better. So we want to have an input value for this function, uh, which is some list of rectangles. And some list of rectangles, so we call it, let's make a proper list of rectangles. Yeah. Better, better, better variable names. And for this list of rectangles, we want to do something. So we want to do something for all of them, and we want to do a calculation. So I think apply is once again what we want to do. List of rectangles. With this list of rectangles, we can do a calculation. Namely, the way we ordered it is bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left. So we can say the width is the distance between, again, this hash means the running index, the, the running variable of our list of operations. So this represents now one of those rectangles we plug in. So we want to have the first element. So you can access elements in an array in Cinderella with an underscore, so the first element. Uh, yes, yes, it is one indexed. Arrays in Cinderella are one index, not zero indexed. And as I said in the beginning, lists and vectors are the same. And for vectors, it makes a little bit more sense to have one indices. Um, so we want to have the distance from the first corner to the second one. That should be the width. And the height should be the distance from the first to the last one. The last one is the top left, right here, how we defined it. So this one. And now we have, OK, we used apply for all for this list of rectangles. So for every rectangle, we got the width and the height. And then we multiply them to get the area. And now we have a long list of individual rectangle areas. And now we want to sum them up. So we wrap everything in a sum. And this is then the last thing calculated inside of our area of rectangles function and will be the result. And instead of printing that out somewhere in the console, let's make another label directly. Uh, maybe maybe between under under A and B, that's a good spot. So we want to have area and then we have area of rectangles. Area of rectangles. And which rectangles do we want to need? Well, the ones we calculated. And I think because we we do have this rects variable already defined in our draw script. We can just use that instead of calling the function again. And area 1.02, does that make sense? Where is the move? Where is the scale? Let's, let's get a grid in. So that doesn't look right, right? So one of those, so this is here, one rectangle, one square should be one. So this should be about one and not 0 0.02. So let's quickly see where we, where we made it, where I made a mistake. Oh yeah, okay, okay. I, I, I obviously I used here the same value, not the, not the other one. So now, so more thinking, less talking. Now that makes sense, right? So one, one square here is about one, and now this this looks very good. And this is about, if you see here, we have one, two, three squares approximately. So that looks that looks very correct. And more importantly, for the purposes of explaining integrals, we can now see that the more rectangles we have, the closer we get to a, a value. Of course, we don't need we don't know what the correct value is because we don't have actually calculated integral. We could do that, I guess, on paper or by hand or fall from alpha. Um, but at least it's a nice, it's a nice visualization of our rectangles, of our integral. Right, and now I think the last thing to do is make it prettier. And then the, the, the basic integral approximation widget is done. Okay, uh, what do I want to do? I make 
want to a, a few changes to the colors and I think the slider could be a little bit nicer. Uh, maybe make the slider also orange to fit the rectangles. And if I crank up the number of rectangles, it's hard to see, so maybe we can we can do something about that. Yeah, so let's let's tackle that next. Okay, so let's start with the slider, I guess. First of all, let's remove the labels because they are not important if you're in this editor view. So again, Command I or Control I to get the inspector open and remove the labels. Yes, um, the endpoints we place them. Like if you want to keep this function, maybe this is a nice. Yeah, maybe this is a nice view. So. Let's place them. Let's make them. Let's make them vertical. So let's place them. Uh, let's make the slider horizontal. So let's snap them to the grid here. And then we don't really need the endpoints. I think they are more distracting. So we make them invisible. And now this looks more like a slider slider. Next, let's make the line itself a little bit thicker maybe yeah let's make it let's make it as thick as the as the point almost or maybe make it as thick as the point and to fit the aesthetic let's make these white and let's make this one white and now we can uh, color the line the same the same rec color here let's do that in code so what was it called? This line is probably A because it's the first one, yes. So A color is the rect color. Right, and now it looks like somehow sensible that this orange slider with the white dot controls the orange rectangles with the white border. Right, um, yeah, let's, let's tweak the color maybe less red, a bit brighter in general. Um, so maybe, maybe this, I don't know. I don't know, let's, hmm. let's keep that one. I'll probably fix it afterwards for the upload. So right, uh, this this will be uploaded to the GitHub repository, which is linked down below in the description, like all the other builds, and may maybe I will have decided on a color, just like here, the plot probably a bit better to make it a little bit a little bit darker, so not have this blue. What did I do? Maybe have something like this one. Oh, what, what is going on? Oh yeah, right. Comma would be better. Something like this. And yeah, let's make the size a little bit higher. Let's make it a little bit thicker. So maybe, I don't know, what, what does five do? Maybe three. Uh, if you're using these modifiers in Cinderella, you can always change their order however you want, by the way. And you could you could even so first of all you see this works and you could the, uh, theoretically even write them before the actual argument of the of the function right because they are they are labeled right so Cinderella understands this is the size modifier so it's the size modifier it can be wherever you want it to be but. Let's let's do that. And yeah, maybe maybe this looks looks nice and readable. And yeah, the last thing I want to do, I want to try maybe make this a little bit uh, nicer to see if it squishes together. Um, so first of all, get rid of the of the inspector here, right? So what we could do is make those lines more translucent. The 
closer we are or the more rectangles we have I don't know let's let's try the rectangle size so again let's let n be the number of rectangles and then we want to make this alpha value here smaller so or oh, maybe minus 0 0.2 and now it should be smaller the higher n is so maybe n over max rect max rects max rects yeah And now this should become more translucent. The, yeah, maybe maybe this is maybe this makes sense. I don't know. Not sure it's it's not sure it's worth it to fiddle around with this, but but it it helps a little bit, I think, to make it more readable. And yeah, I, I think that's more or less it. Um Oh yeah, let's 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 rewrite this. Maybe this is a good idea. Maybe instead of area double point, let's write what we're actually computing to make that clear. We're computing an integral. In Cinderella, you can use LaTeX, so you add two dollar sign delimiters, and then you can write LaTeX code. So this is the integral of a to b of f of x dx and it equals right and and yeah this looks more like the thing we're actually computing and again you might position it depending on how the graph looks so let me see what 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 is a different graph maybe Maybe the square root of x, we're ignoring the negative part anyway, so maybe this is nice. Yeah, let's, let's take this as our, let's make it a little bit higher and then, then I'll finish it off. I think this is a nice, nice little integral visualization interactive in Cinderella. And of course, once you're done, you can close the script editor and now you can you can use that oh why, why is it cut off okay you have to re redraw it and now you can use this as a standalone application to talk about integrals all right uh yeah and and i think that's all i wanted to do with with this video if you enjoyed it please let me know and as i said i might do more of these cinderella live builds and if you want to talk about Cinderella and the partner project Cindy.js more a little bit, you can join the Summer Product Discord server, link in the description. And apart from that, the next video will be a proper video, quote unquote proper video, and probably not a Cinderella build. And yeah, with that, thank you for watching and until next time.